Hello, my name is Kim and I am Barbara's daughter. Welcome to my FlossTube channel. Thanks so much for stopping by and taking the time to watch and see what I have been up to with my stitching. I'm going to start today with a couple questions. Um, there were only a couple from last week's video. One was from Cindy who wanted to know about the dot fabric that I'm using for the um, I'm using it for these Priscilla and Chelsea stitching with the housewives ornaments and I'm also using it for um, the Christmas alphabet that I'm working on. She wanted to know where I got this and I had purchased this when I went to Needleworkers Delight which is my LNS in New Jersey but uh, you can get this kind of fabric I mean I don't want to say everywhere but a lot of places. If you want to look online I'm pretty sure 123 Stitch has it and a lot of other needlework shop ha have it. Um, I feel like, I don't know if I have the name of it. This is like a raw linen, and then it's just a mini dot. I don't know, this doesn't have the tag on it anymore, but it has different colors. You can get gray with the dots. You can get this kind of uh, more beige color with the dots. So it just depends on what you're looking for. I think Fat Quarter Shop might have some too, and they're, they come in different counts. So I'm using 36 count, but you can get it in different counts as well. So the other question I had was from Anne. It was more of a comment on something I said about my Victorian motto um, fabric that I got. I think I had said it was a quarter yard because that's what it says on here, but it is actually a fat quarter. She remarked um, that it seemed wider than the nine inches that a quarter yard would be. And she's absolutely right. For some reason, when I open this up, it just looks like a long and skinny piece, but it is, that is a fat quarter. So um, I measured it and you were right, Anne. It is a fat quarter from, um, that's Victorian Motto Sampler Shop Fabric of the Month. And I had mentioned that I am thinking about going with a half yard. I actually had to order a half yard for a different piece that um, I'll tell you about later because I have tons of fat quarters, but I don't, I don't do very many projects that are bigger than that. But sometimes, once in a while, I need just like another inch or two and so a fat quarter is not quite big enough. Um, and that's what I ran into this week. But anyway, thank you so much, Anne, for pointing that out. And that's all the questions that I had this week. So I'll start with uh, my one finish for the week. Uh, it was a start and a finish. I showed it to you last week and said I was thinking about starting it. It is Whale Watch by Chessie and Me. It came in a kit. I got it from Jen Stitching Niche. And I didn't even realize um, when I got it, but it came with uh, silk threads, Gloriana silks, which I loved stitching with. I particularly love the red. Um, I just really thought it was a beautiful color. It's coming out. It seems a little dark. It actually looks more uh, true to color back here, but then you can't see it too well because it's tiny. This was super cute, and there's a lot of stitching on that tiny little uh, piece. And check out the one over one on 36 count. Now that's just the 10 stitch. And I'm gonna zoom in even closer. It is, the coverage on that is pretty awesome for just being a 10 stitch. I was watching Teresa Kitten Stitcher last night and she was talking about doing one over one on 40 count and how she does a full cross with that. Now that might be with silk floss, maybe like a thinner, type of floss like that, a Verisoi silk or something. But I don't know how I would have done, even on 36 count, a full cross. Cause this, this is pretty thick just as it is on a 10 stitch. But what this made me think of doing that, I, I was a little nervous about it. I almost didn't do it. I almost put some of these little uh, motifs here over there, but I said, let me try it. So what this made me think of is I have that, um, Schoolhouse series by Brenda, I think it's Brenda Gervais. I'll post a picture here so you see what I'm talking about. And I started to do this series on 28 count Mushroom Lagana, which I think might be the called for, one over one. And I really struggled with it because I don't know um, if it's just the way I was stitching, Maybe I should have watched like tutorials or something, but I kept losing my thread because of the way that the fibers are lined up. If you go in a certain direction, you're, you're lo you lose your thread. It hides underneath the fibers of the fabric. 
And that was really frustrating to me. And it was also really frustrating to me that one over one was so slow. And that I think was maybe the first time I ever tried one over one. And I then did the skin on my Lady of the Flag Mirabilia piece one over one, and that was fine. Uh, I did do a full cross with that. That was on 32 count, but I would do like one leg of the cross all the way and then go back. And so I wasn't losing the um, floss behind the fibers as much, I think, because I was doing it that way. So when I was doing this, it occurred to me that maybe I should take that, that series out again and um, give it another try. Now, I don't know that I would do it on the 28 count mushroom lugana, but maybe I would try it on like 32 count one over one. I could do it on 36 10 stitch. That might be crazy to do that, those, all those pieces on that. Um, I don't know. I might, I might check it out. I might give it a try. Uh, but this Chessie and Me Whale Watch, um, I have loved this since it came out. I'm so thrilled um, that it's done. And I have a special uh, FFO for this, which I will talk about later when I get to my haul. So that was my only finish this week, but I did work on a lot of other projects. I'm working on Lantern Lane, which looks like this for my Jolly July stitching. And I did not get the house finished this week, which was what I had wanted to do because I got distracted with two new starts, the Chessie and Me piece and another one, another one that I'll show you next. But I got some work done on the house. So the house, I had ripped out the red last week that I didn't like, and I put in like two, um, maybe two rows of red I showed you last week, and that was it. So I've done most of the red in the house. I just need to do this here and fill that in. And then um, there's two chimneys. I have to stitch the um, rest of the roof here outline because uh, I actually, I stitched all the way across uh, for like three or four rows before I realized that the there was actually a mistake in the whole outline and the roof and everything. So I had to like rip stuff out. Um, so I have to fix that. And at least I didn't stitch the whole house wrong. <laughs> I figured that before I got too far. So once the house is done, the rest of it is really um, not that bad. I think it'll go quickly. We've got a border on the top and the bottom, an alphabet, another fence down there, the date piece, and the flower motif. So, I mean, the house is really the beast in this piece. So I would like to get that done this week. Actually, I was thinking of this piece and the Hawk, Shores of Hawk Run, Run Hollow piece as... Um, Maybe what I'm going to get done this weekend as a goal to do, um, like little goals, not get the whole piece done, but get the house done, get the block done in the shores of Hawkorn Hollow, just kind of set little goals for myself. So, um, the other thing that I worked on, which is why I did not finish the house in Lantern Lane because I got distracted. New start on Barbara Anna Designs, Mary Pepper Pouch. My friend Dee gave me this pattern and the floss for it, and I found in my stash um, what I think is the perfect color. It's called Pumpkin by x Designs, and I love, love, love how it is coming out. I wasn't sure about the if all the colors, colors would show up right. And you can see down here the, um, the yellow, before it's surrounded by that orange, does um, kind of fade in with the fabric a little bit, but once you put the orange around it, I think it's fine. Um, so I have basically the big bird to do and I have to finish that flower and the date at the bottom and a couple little tiny uh, star motifs. So I can probably get this done this week and I don't know if I'll finish it like this, like a bag. That's pretty cute. Um, but I'm not sure. There are no finishing directions in it. So it's, I mean, I have some directions from um, Blackbird designs that I've made into bags before. I'm sure I could figure it out, but I don't know. We'll have to see. I do want to get that FFO before the fall, though, because the colors on there I just really love. The next whip that I have is Blackbird Designs Summer, Autumn, Winter, and I'll put a picture in here uh, for that. And I had thought I was done with the autumn section, but I was not. 
I had to finish that up. And then I just started on the border for the winter. So I didn't get too much done on this. But I had to do the autumn top border here and the dividing band down there and all these little tiny um, four stitch motifs in there. And then I just went across and did the border on the top and the bottom and this on the side. So it's not a lot of stitching left. I also have to do, once I finish in here, I have to do my initials and the date down there. So we're getting there. I will be really happy to have this done. And actually, um, oh, who was I watching? I'm not gonna remember who it was. If you're watching and this was your completely brilliant idea, I let me know and I will give you credit next time. Somebody said that I was watching that they don't like to do alphabets necessarily and they were going to rechart and write um, to everything there is a season. And they didn't end up doing it. Who was it that said that? I don't know. Somebody tell me in the comments who it was. But if you remember, I was talking about how I wanted to put this in a standard frame if I could, and it's it would fit in an 11 by 14 widthwise, but it's a little um, short. But if I under here, because I think I have a little bit room, a little bit more room down here. If I were to stitch to everything there is a season down here, that would make it longer and maybe make it fit better in 11 by 14 frames. So I may do that. If that was your brilliant idea, tell me. I want to give you credit because I'm probably stealing that idea. Someone that I just watched too, but I've watched a lot of floss tube, so I can't remember who it was. I'm so sorry. So I think I might try that out. Have to finish this first and then I have to chart the piece, the, the phrase down there. So we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you posted. And the last thing that I worked on is the Shores of Hawkorn Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. And I am working on the first block up here. And I did a little bit, I didn't get it done, but uh, we, we lost internet. Last night, there was a thunderstorm here. We didn't lose power, but internet. So my 11-year-old had no internet, couldn't play Fortnite. It's terrible. Uh, he was forced to play board games with his parents, but uh, it was actually a lot of fun, but no stitching done uh, last night because I was busy entertaining him. So I have my floss kind of stuck in here still. So I'm working on the, the boulders down here at the bottom and finishing the little bird that's there. And then after that, I just have to fill in all of this with water. You can kind of see I did the some of the white that's the cr uh, crest of the waves. Uh, the thing about this is there are so many mistakes in this. <laughs> oh well. Um, the block itself is the right size. So that is key because all the other blocks have to be the same size. Uh, but the lighthouse is one um, row too short because I just miscounted. So when I got down here to do the, the boulders, I ended like a row short and I'm like oh my gosh what's wrong with this like is the border around not the right size you know where did I make a mistake so I figured it out and I just I'm adding an extra row of stitching inside the bottom here to make up for the fact that the lighthouse is a row too short but that lighthouse is all wrong because the white parts are supposed to be stitched in red and the red parts are supposed to be stitched in white I just looked at the chart and reversed them it's still a red and white lighthouse so I'm gonna leave it uh, and I like the way it's coming out. I really am enjoying stitching this. This is on 36 count, um, picture this plus Heartland. And I just realized I have not said what anything is being stitched on. So I'm going to go back and put it in little notes down at the bottom. Cause I, I didn't do that last week either. I'm really sorry. I keep forgetting to do that. So I'm going to put that in, um, when I edit the video, I'll put that in, but this is on 36 count. Heartland and I love picture this plus 36 count because it's actually a little smaller than 36 count and when you stitch with one thread the coverage is fantastic and with Hawkorn hollow pieces that's what you need you need really good coverage because it's a lot it's a lot of stitching in that piece okay so that brings me to haul stitchy kindness etc etc oh actually no it doesn't I had one previous finish that I wanted to show you should have done this at the beginning I guess but this is a chalkboard from Hobby Lobby. There's no number on it. Uh, no, sorry. I got it last year at Hobby Lobby. And this pattern is by Heart and Hand. 
I will put the picture in it because I don't remember the title. So I'll put the picture here of what it looks like, um, the pattern looks like, but I did it on this blue fabric. This is before I was keeping track of what this, um, what fabric I'm using, but this is definitely from uh, Silk Weaver. And it's a 32 count because I used two strands in this and I changed the colors a, a little bit and I didn't go for the called for colors, but I went for the look of the called for colors and just used my stash. And I mounted it on this um, piece of map board and then another piece of map board with the um, dot fabric on it and added some little B buttons that I just glued on. So that's super cute. I really like that. I love it on the blue fabric. And um, I took that out to display for August and thought I would share it with you. Okay, now haul and stitchy kindness and all that good stuff. So this is fabric I ordered from Kathy at Inspired Needle. It is 36 count picture this plus shale. And I bought this uh, to go with Huckleberry Farm, I think is the name of it. I'll insert a picture here. I had ordered this a long time ago. It wasn't in stock. So then when I went to Needleworkers, I found another gray piece of fabric and thought, oh, I'll use that because it's like a grayish purple color. So I thought, I'll use that. Well, then this came in, so Kathy sent it. And actually, I really love this. I love the modeling on it. So now I'm back to, I think I'm gonna use this. I haven't kitted up the threads or anything yet. So once I do that, um, I'll be able to tell which kind of fabric I wanna use. So that's that fabric. I also bought all of the Hands on Design Year of Chalk patterns. So they're not in order, but let me see if I can show them to you in order. I'm going to do all of these. I have a finishing idea for them. So I have four that are kitted up and ready to go, and I want to keep those aside to show you what I'm going to do with them. But uh, I'll just show you in order first. This is January, let it snow. And um, February, you hold my heart. March, may luck be yours. April, it says hello spring. May. Plant Seeds of Joy. I also, let's see, June. Catch a Wave. July is Red, White, and Barbecue. August, un Sleep Under the Stars. September is Summer Don't Go. October, Let Them Eat Candy. November is Thankful and Grateful. And December is Peace on Earth. So I want to do them all. I want to put them in a box where I am every month switching them out and they live inside the box. But I'm not sure I would get them done. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not sure how quickly I'll get them done. So I decided to start with four of them, one for each season. And then I'll be able to switch them out each season. And as I stitch the rest of them, it'll just add to what I have. So I'm gonna do let it snow first for winter. And I'm not gonna do it in all of these colors because I don't like stitching on black fabric. So I decided to just kind of lay out all my fabric um, and pull threads. And so I'm going to be doing this one um, just with two colors. I have a uh, Old Prim Blue from Victorian Motto. And I'm, I am using chalk for my white. To find my board, here it is. And this is just a scrap piece of um, Silk Weaver 36 count. I don't know the color, but I'm going to do this with um, those colors. So that'll be the first one I do. And then I'm going to do, um, Hello Spring. I'm doing that on another 36 count piece of Silk Weaver with um, a couple, uh, I think I have three colors here. All Victorian Motto. I have Perky Petal Pink, Sunlit Wheatfield, and Highland Fling. And 
and I just wanted to do um, some pink in those flowers instead of just the white. So I'll mix up the pink and the green and the yellow in that piece. I'm not sure how exactly I'm going to do it. We're just going to wing it as we go. Then I'm going to do Catch a Wave. And this one I'm going to do on a blue Wexford linen in 32 count that I also got from Needleworker Delight, Silk Weaver. And I'm using a beige, uh, which is actually Classic Colorworks Caramel. And then I'm using Dublin Bay, which might be my favorite Classic Colorworks Blue. And Gentle Arts Freedom for this piece. So the beige will be like the um, starfish and the anchors and everything. The whales will be the kind of gray Dublin Bay and the blue will be some of the words and maybe the border. I don't have a lot of the blue, so we'll see what I can, what I can squeeze out there. And then finally, I'm going to do thankful and grateful and I'm going to do it on the pumpkin the fabric that I'm using for Mary Pepper because I love it so much. And I have Ring of Marigolds and Multi Orange from Victorian Motto. And I have Classic Colorworks Bean Sprout. So I think those are going to show up really nice on that fabric. So my plan is to do these four first. And then after that, I'll go back and look through, you know, the other. I haven't picked out fabric or floss for any of the other months. So I'll do that once I have finished up these four, but at least then I'll have one for each season. I can find, I've been looking for the appropriate size and type of box to use. Um, I haven't found anything yet, but I haven't been looking that long or that hard for it. So I will keep looking for that. And um, the other thing that I got haul wise is I have the pattern land that I love. I talked to you about it last week. This is actually just my working copy. So it, it looks like this. And um, I had put this away saying, oh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'll start this yet. Then I was watching Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, which I um, think I put her channel on my floss tube video last week to, as one of the shout outs. And she said something like, oh, I'm so glad I'm seeing like other people have this and are starting it because I want to see, you know, other people stitching. And I said, oh, well, maybe I should start it. So um, it's a lot of DMC colors. There were uh, a few weeks and a few classic color works. But my biggest issue was that I, I don't have a piece of fabric that's big enough. So on 36 count, you need just a couple inches bigger than a, a fat quarter. You basically could fit the piece on the fat quarter, but you wouldn't have any room left to um, use for framing it. And when I'm, I don't mind having a small margin, but when I'm doing a huge piece like this, I want to make sure I have enough to wrap it around that mat board. So um, I ordered some fabric and it's not going to be here till Monday. So um, I can't show it to you yet, but I ordered uh, from Extra Designs. It's kind of a light gray color. I hope it's going to look good. I hope it's going to work. It's hard to order online and not see. Um, if that doesn't work, what I might do is drive up to needleworkers and look in person for fabric um, and just have them uh, cut me a, a fat quarter of it. Um, I mean, if it doesn't work, I'll use that fabric for something else. It, it's, I'm sure it's beautiful fabric, but these colors are, um, these are almost all the colors. I'm missing, um, with that fabric, I think I have two uh, blue colors that are coming still. So I've got all the floss coming. I've got fabric that I think is going to work. I don't know when I'm going to start this. I want to really finish some of the things I'm already working on, but I may also get this fabric on Monday and start it on Monday. We'll see. Got to stitch what you want to stitch, right? So the last thing that I have to show you is something that my mom made for me. After I saw Michelle Bendy Stitchy talking about her cross stitch journal. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch Michelle because she does a really good job of explaining what she's using it for and um, how she's mounting her small cross stitch, cross stitch pieces in a journal. So I have this Chessy and Me piece and I thought, oh, I have some other small things too. Maybe I'll have, um, I'll put them in a journal too, instead of making like a pillow or something else to use them for.
So I wanted to get a cross-stitch journal, but instead of going to Etsy and buying a cross-stitch journal, I went to mom. I said, mom, I want a cross-stitch journal. And she said, what? What? <laughs> like, what do you want this for? So, um, I, she does junk journaling and, and she makes journals. Um, and she's made me a couple things before, like I have a reading journal she made me, um, but I didn't really know what to expect and what she was going to do. And then she gave me this, which first of all, let's just talk about the cover. This is an actual quilt that I made. It's part of a quilt, obviously, that I made. And don't freak out because she cut it in pieces. It's okay. So I made this quilt. Uh, I don't think I was married yet. So that means it was at least 19 years ago. And I, so I was living at my parents' house. I can actually remember sitting in my parents' room, like watching TV with my mom. And we were both working on the hand applique of the circles onto these Dresden plates. And I ended up, uh, I made this for my husband's grandmother and I gave it to her. She really liked it. I was actually like, it's one of those things where you're making it. You're like, oh, I wish I could keep this for myself because I love it so much. Right. And my mom made one that had red circles in the center. And so I can remember making it. And my uh, husband's grandmother, she had it for years in her house. And then when she went, um, she went into a nursing home facility and she brought it with her. And, you know, they used a Sharpie marker to write her name on it so it wouldn't get lost. And it got stained. There's some like little blue stains uh, in it. And uh, after she passed away a couple years ago, I got the quilt back along with I think a second quilt that I had made her and it was in pretty bad shape the stains and um, actually some of uh, because it had been washed so many times my, like my hand applique <laughs> you can kind of see on here is um, I'm not the best at it so it was kind of coming apart in some places so my mom and I tried a lot of different things to get the stains out uh, and nothing nothing worked so I just kind of put it aside uh, left it at my mom's house in her sewing room and forgot about it. So then two things happened. First of all, um, unbeknownst to me at the time, 19 years ago, when we were making this quilt, my mom knew I really liked it. So she took all of the extra fabric and made all of these blocks. And she was going to make me my own quilt in these colors. And she never ended up, um, putting the quilt together, but all of the blocks are ready to just have the Dresden plates sewn on. So she gave me the container of all the blocks and said, well, we can't get this one clean, but you could, you could make another one and it's halfway done for you. So that's really exciting that I can, uh, eventually, <laughs> if I can put down my cross stitch long enough to do some quilting, I could actually make another quilt, um, out of the same fabrics. Um, but then secondly, she cut this up and made it for, um, a journal cover for my cross stitch journal. So that's really awesome. And, um, I guess I'll just kind of flip through the whole thing with you here. So when you open it up, we've got all these pages. Like she's got a sewing machine that she uses to sew paper. I don't, I don't understand that, but it's like zigzag stitched all around in here. There's a, uh, an envelope that has, um, project information cards. And the idea is that you would take your piece and you would mount it somehow on these pages and you would put that information card with it so that you would know what it was and you had stitched and everything. She also included this picture from 1994. That's me. As a teenager in 1994, I was like a sophomore in high school maybe. Yeah. And I'm um, sitting on the couch cross stitching, looking at my mother like, how dare you take my picture? But um, that that is uh, maybe not the earliest picture of me cross stitching, but it sure is an early picture of me cross stitching with my dad sitting in the chair and his two buddies sitting on the couch because this is at actually at a house we used to rent at the beach in the summer. And so we had like all our friends come down to um, visit us. But uh, I was cross stitching even then antisocial, didn't want to hang out with people, just wanted to cross stitch or read. Um, so anyway, she tucked that into the first page of the journal, which I thought was really funny. 
And um, on each page, there's just all these little, what's the word? Ephemera, is that it? Little paper bits and you can tuck them into places. Oops. And pockets, this thing says scissors here. Just little touches, you can slide something in here on every page, clips to clip things to. It's just really beautiful. It's in a binder. It's actually a um, Better Homes and Gardens book that she, let me take the, let me take the cover off and show you. She used a, uh, an actual book. Yeah, Better Homes and Gardens sewing book. So I'm not sure, but I think what she did is she just took it, all the guts out of the book and then she added the, um, well, I don't know if she, I don't know if it had the three ring binder system in it already or if she added that. Inquiring minds want to know, mom. If you ask, I know she's going to say that there are many, many videos on YouTube about junk journaling. I certainly do not know how to do this, but you can find videos out there. So yeah, there's just so many pretty pages and little treasures hidden in here. And I'm really just very excited to have this. So the idea, my first idea was I was going to put Chessie and me in the front and do a whole bunch of smalls as I did them. I would put them in here. But then I was thinking, like I have this physical piece, but sometimes there are pieces that I make that are smalls that I give away to other people, either for a gift exchange or like there's a couple Facebook groups I'm in that do exchanges and then they're gone and there's not really a record that I have done them. So then I was thinking maybe instead of putting the actual pieces in there, cause I could just make, I could just make this into a pillow and put it in my dough bowl, right? What I might do in here is if I'm doing a piece and giving it away to someone, that I would take pictures of it and put those in here and use this as a scrapbook of the pieces that I've given away so that I have a record of what I've done, even though it's not physically in my house here. So I'm not sure. It remains to be seen. Um, the other issue that I had when I was thinking about it is I'm not sure the best way to mount a physical piece of cross stitch in a book because I don't want to put it on uh, mat board because that's too thick to then if I had that on every page in here, the book itself would be too thick. So, I mean, I could do some type of, uh, I forget what it's called, but where you do a decorative kind of stitch, you pull out the threads and you, so it won't unravel. I could do that. I could just fold it under, but then I'm like, well, how am I attaching it to the page? I could clip it in with clips that are not permanent, but I'm not sure. So I have to do some thinking about this because I really want what goes in, I really want it to be nice, what goes in the book. And I'm just not sure if I should do it with physical cross stitch pieces or if I should be taking pictures and kind of journaling about the cross stitch pieces that I'm giving away. So have to think on that, but I was super excited to get my journal. Um, there were whispers of a potential journal giveaway sometime in the future. Um, so the other exciting news is that I asked my mom if she wanted to be on my floss tube channel and she didn't say no. So that's in the works. I can't promise when, but at some point we're going to have a Barbara special where she'll come on and uh, show some of her work. I hope you hear that mom. Everybody wants to see you. They keep asking when's Barbara coming on. So I'm hoping to do that. Um, sometime soon. I don't think that she wants to be on every week. Um, it's a little difficult uh, to schlep all the stuff from her house to my house, all that. Um, so I think I would probably just go to her house, film a segment with her every once in a while, and just add that to my weekly video. So if I can convince her uh, to do that, then uh, I hope to have that on soon. Um, I was going to do a whip parade because um, I saw a lot of people doing that, um, but I, I I'm kind of on the fence about that too, because 
I just started making videos in April. And so I did a whip parade once I think it was my second video. Um, so let me know if that's something that you want me to do. I can definitely do it. Uh, otherwise I think I would just wait until the end of the year, the beginning of next year and do it then. Um, the nice thing about a whip parade is you start looking at all of your projects that you haven't touched in a while and say, Oh, I really like that. I want to get back to that. So that, that does appeal to me as well. But, um, let me know if a whip parade is something that you're interested in seeing in the future. I think that's everything for today. Um, my plans are just to work on what I have uh, already started last week, Mary Pepper, Lantern Lane, Shores of Hawk Run Hollow, Autumn, uh, Summer, Autumn, Winter. I just want to get those uh, finished or as close to finish as I can because I have a lot of things I really want to start, but I also feel like I should be finishing up some of these projects that I really like. So common problem of all of us stitchers, right? Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a really great week. Please feel free to leave me any questions or comments down below, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye.